Come all of you who are weary. Here we are, eager to find rest from our troubles. Come all of you who crave peace. Here we are, eager to find renewal for our spirits. Welcome to each of you who have come here to worship. May you find strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Amen. confession. Holy God, you created the world and all that is in it. You called it good. You called me good. You gave us each free will to choose our own paths. We have strayed from since the beginning of humanity. You sent the prophets and teachers of wisdom to call us back to the way of life. You have shown us what is required of us. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with you, our God. We don't listen. We're stubborn and hard-headed. Forgive us, God of mercy. Restore us in the way of Christ so that others may see you working in us and say, God is good. Let us confess our personal sins in silence. God is faithful to the covenant offered to us. Though we have failed, God has not. God welcomes us back with open arms, and the gift of the Spirit allows to be called good once again. Friends, believe this good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are called as friends, forgiven as sinners, and sent as servants. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, scripture reading today, Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 12. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For lengths of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It would be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. My child, do not despise the Lord's discipline, or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves the one he loves, as a father, the son in whom he delights. Our second reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people who have unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go, go and say to these people, keep listening, but do not comprehend, keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate. Until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burnt again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is all that shall remain of the stump. This too is the words of our Lord. This too are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Here I am, Lord, says Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It's also one of my favorite hymns. I'd love to sing that here, hymn. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? Right? I, you know I'm not a singer. Um, it, but it's such a lovely hymn talking about going to the people right. and healing their wounds and, and helping the blind and the lame, and I will tend to them. And, and I think you know, perhaps that's what Isaiah had in mind. And we, we all know so well this scripture, here I am, Lord, in that hymn, here I am, Lord, at least most of us do. But what we don't know is what immediately follows that scripture. It says, keep listening. This is what I want you to say to the people. Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but don't understand. Your minds will be made dull and their ears and eyes will be shut so that they won't really understand what's going on. And Isaiah's like, what? How long, O oh Lord? And God says, until everything is laid to waste, until the Lord sends everyone far away and there is vast emptiness in the land. And Isaiah, you can tell uh, his mind is just blown. And, and it says, uh, this the only thing that's going to be left is, is the seed inside of a burnt stump. That's it. That's the only hope that remains in this story right there. Now, I assure you, as Isaiah goes on, the promise of what that seed will become grows and grows and grows like that little mustard seed and that the people from the stump of Jesse, the son of David, who births the, the reign of Christ, right, grows into something bigger than the people of Israel, bigger than the land of Jerusalem, and encompasses the whole world. So there, there is that hope within Isaiah, but boy, there is a lot of bad news right there. So when I was in graduate school, I, I took rhetoric and composition. And in this course, we had to do a lesson on writing bad news letters. So we were given all of these different scenarios and we had to deliver the bad news. Uh, here's your bad news mortgage letter. Here's your bad news we're downsizing letter. Here's your bad news acceptance or non-acceptance letter. And, and there was a little formula that we were given that really worked. And it was good news affirmation, bad news acceptance, good news affirmation, right? And we always followed that formula. And, and, and that's important because words matter and what we say matters because they have an effect on people, especially when you're delivering bad news. But with this scripture, there's something that happens in it where 
Isaiah, Isaiah comes and, and he is standing in the Holy of Holies. And this is, this is an important thing that happens. An angel comes down, or Sarah, for the, one of these three-winged things, and it takes coals from the altar, and it touches Isaiah's tongue with the altar. This is something that we see with a few other prophets. Uh, we also see this in the New Testament, where there's this one scripture, and it says, it says, I want you to love your enemies and do good to those who even persecute you. But this is it, that's what Jesus says in one gospel, but then Paul's repeating it later, later in one of the epistles, and he says, because that will heap coals upon them, right? And, and we have to understand that heaping coals on someone wasn't necessarily a bad thing in the prophetic biblical sense because it changed what they were speaking from their mouths, right? It, it was a purification. And, and that's something that happens uh, with some of the proverb literature that we get, some of the wisdom literature we get that comes out of this, this period of exile and, and this period of the people needing to be renewed. There's a lot of stuff that happens. See, when we get some of those bad news letters, we know that we have to double down and try even harder. And that's one of the things that we get out of this text. The bad news here is that the people are being sent out from Isaiah, they're being taken into exile. And, and God is saying, listen, this was your own doing. You, you guys didn't listen to all the stuff I said. This is really cause and effect, right? My hand is still with you. I'm still present with you. But there's going to be this time of renewal where we have to regrow, where we have to become better than what we were, where we have to have this purification, this burning away of all the bad impurities so that we can be the holy people that we're called to be. And so you even get with Isaiah, with something as bad as this, here I am, Lord, and the Lord says, this is what I want you to say. You still get this, this good news coming later in Isaiah. The good news, bad news, good news kind of way of writing. It's important, and it's important not just when we're doing these bad news letters, but, but in how we talk to ourselves. See, there's ways that we can talk to ourselves that shape us. For example, that old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. We know that's not true because words greatly affect us. And in the Proverbs, we get a couple of things that they say. It says, control your impulses and speak wisely. And not only to others, but to ourselves, our internal voices, right? Conquer your bitterness and speak kindly. Correct your attitude and speak positively. Now, this isn't to negate. This isn't to negate something that needs to be corrected or something that needs to be said that's hard to say. I think you need to say those things. But you need to say them in such a way where the hope and the good news triumph over those bad things. So here's a great example. You don't say to yourself, right, like we tend to do sometimes, I'm stupid. I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that, right? Well, listen, you're not stupid. You did something dumb, but that doesn't make you stupid. Your whole being is not stupid just because you did it one time. Even if you do it a whole lot of times, that still doesn't make it true, right? That's this all or nothing thinking. Or to say something like, oh my gosh, I'm such a, such a klutz. I always goof it up. I'm always going to goof it up. Well, that's not true. You get it right a lot as well. And we start to see this embedded even in Isaiah, because Isaiah starts with God saying, you are my people, and God ending with, you're going to be my people. But in the middle of that, there's, there's some bad news. These are the things you did. You're still loved. You're still, you're still within the covenant, but you've got to do, you've got to do some purifying, right? And that starts, that starts with owning, owning that when God created us, God called us good. There's that other proverb that says, don't, don't rebuke the one who disciplines you. 
because they discipline you out of love the way a father would discipline a son, right? And, and it, that's a good thing. Yeah, it can feel bad, but it's couched within that good news, bad news, good news. The father loves you. You did something wrong. You're going to be disciplined. The father still loves you. And now that you know what you did wrong, you're better for it. And so you don't do it again. Those are important things. And, and we, don't, we don't like it. Who likes to write a bad news letter? So instead of, instead of saying, right, we are all sinners and not worthy of love, we say, no, God created us good. And therefore, just in our being, we are worthy of love. We mess up, and we own that, but we're going to do better the next time. That's what it means to be the people of God. My dad used to say to me all the time, listen, I don't understand why in the church we always confess our sins, right? Doesn't it just seem awful sometimes that we're all like sinner, 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 sinner? Why don't we talk about good? Because aren't we just beating people down? And I said, Dad, you've got to look at it in the bigger context of worship. We call people to worship as the people of God. Come, all of you who are tired and weary and find rest for your souls, right? Come, all of you who are searching for strength and for hope, and come find hope and strength for tomorrow, right? We call you as those good people of God. And then we have that confession. Let's, let's admit some of the things that we've done and not done, and then we give you the good news. You are redeemed and being recreated in the image of Christ, right? That's the formula that we follow each week because it's that good news you're called, bad news you know, we admit Here's how we can be better leaders, better disciples. Good news, God is working on you, and the Spirit is the gift of God to you to help you be those people. Words have a lasting impact. We know that. We know that. But your words can bring healing to hurting people. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And we're told in some of the scriptures, one of the ways to help us grow in the image of Christ is to put away our bitterness, is to put away our angst, and to look at all things through the renewed lens of Christ. James 1 says, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their, on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Or Psalm 14, set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Not just what I say externally, but also what I say internally. Proverbs 16, intelligent people think before they speak. What they say then is more persuasive. Proverbs 15, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Listen, there are going to be times when we need rebuke, when we need discipline, but there's a way to do that that's loving. It's that good news affirmation. It's that bad news. Here's your discipline. Here's your reproach. And here's that good news. You're going to be better for it. Proverbs says, a fool rejects discipline and reproach, but the wise one grows and learns from it. So may we grow and learn from some of the things that we, we all need to work on in ourselves, and may the world be better for it, and may people see God working in us and say, I want to be wise like that. May it be so. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> This morning we lift in prayer the names of loved ones 
who struggle with illness, grief, alienation, and sorrow. We share these names to you, O Lord, silently in our hearts and minds. We also share those things, O God, at this time, which weigh heavily on our hearts for our nation and our world. Hear our prayers as we lift them up silently to you. Most holy God, work wonders in us beyond anything we may ever imagine or hope. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Christ guide your way and be your path. May the Spirit empower you to do good to all people, loving all as we have been loved by God through Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen.